A special thank you to each of our subscribers who make this channel possible. Here's today's story. In a world where connection often seems just a swipe away, the new series, How to Die Alone, delves into the profound distinction between being alone and feeling lonely. Co-showrunner Vera Santa Maria and series creator Natasha Rothwell have crafted a narrative that not only entertains but also invites viewers to reflect on their own relationships and personal journeys. Rothwell, known for her work on Insecure and The White Lotus, stars as Mel, an airport employee whose life takes a pivotal turn following a near-death experience. This transformative moment serves as a catalyst for Mel to reassess her priorities and strive to become the main character in her own life. Santa Maria elaborates on Rothwell's vision, emphasizing the importance of exploring the nuances of loneliness. She really wanted to explore the difference between being alone and loneliness, Santa Maria explains. In the series, Mel initially embodies the essence of loneliness, yearning for connection with others while grappling with her own dissatisfaction. The narrative aims to illustrate that being alone does not equate to being unhappy. Rather, it can lead to a deeper understanding of oneself. The premise of how to die alone is rooted in authenticity, with Rothwell drawing from her own experiences. The show's opening sequence, where Mel is nearly crushed by a piece of furniture while reaching for Crab Rangoon, is a reflection of Rothwell's love for DIY projects and her penchant for food. Santa Maria notes, In the original conception, she had a different near-death experience, but we took two of her experiences in life and just brought them together. This blend of personal anecdotes adds a layer of realism to the storytelling, making Mel's journey relatable to audiences. The series has been in development for several years, with Rothwell nurturing the idea for approximately seven to eight years before collaborating with Santa Maria. The partnership was born out of a shared desire to create a show that not only entertained but also resonated with viewers on a deeper level. Santa Maria recalls, I read the project, and I saw everything she was trying to do, and signed right up. Their collaborative process involved a continuous exchange of ideas, resulting in a more nuanced portrayal of Mel's character. As the narrative unfolds, Mel's transformation is depicted through a blend of magical realism and relatable experiences. Rothwell and Santa Maria have crafted psychological projections that allow viewers to witness Mel's aspirations and desires in a unique way. These projections serve as a reminder of the person Mel wishes to become, highlighting the internal struggles many face while navigating their lives. Santa Maria explains, We wanted to show that Mel, when we meet her, is a person who is lonely, so she's wanting to be with people, versus being just happy and alone when you're content. The setting of JFK Airport plays a significant role in Mel's journey, serving as both a workplace and a space for self-discovery. Santa Maria emphasizes the importance of the airport as a backdrop, stating, We have the fun of a workplace, but then we also have a place where she can be reflective, a place where she can dream. This duality allows for a rich exploration of Mel's character, as she navigates her professional life while confronting her personal challenges. Mel's relationships, particularly with her friend Rory and her ex-co-worker Alex, add depth to the narrative. The evolving dynamics within these friendships reflect the complexities of adult relationships, showcasing the difficulties of growing apart and the necessity of having tough conversations. Santa Maria notes, We've had these best friends that you sometimes are the person that you were just with, but that you may outgrow, and having to have those hard conversations to see, can this person be in conflict with you? Can your friendship survive a conflict? As Mel embarks on her journey of self-discovery, the series highlights the importance of taking risks and embracing change. Santa Maria and Rothwell aim to portray the reality that not everyone finds happiness through partnership and that fulfillment can come from within. Some people end up partnered, some people don't, but that doesn't mean the people who have ended up unpartnered are unhappy, Santa Maria asserts. The first four episodes of How to Die Alone are now available for streaming on Hulu, with new episodes released weekly. Santa Maria expresses excitement for the future of the series, revealing that they have mapped out Mel's arc for four seasons. We talked through really four seasons of what Mel's arc could be, and we needed to do that work in order to build our pilot, she explains. Each season promises to be more ambitious, allowing Mel to take bigger swings in her quest for self-actualization. Ultimately, How to Die Alone seeks to resonate with viewers on a personal level, 
encouraging them to reflect on their own lives while enjoying the comedic elements of the series. Santa Maria hopes that audiences will find themselves laughing while simultaneously experiencing moments of introspection. The thing we say a lot is laughing yourself into an epiphany. And that's what I'm really hoping viewers get from watching the show, she shares. As viewers follow Mel's journey through her triumphs and setbacks, the series serves as a reminder that the pursuit of happiness is a deeply personal journey, one that can be navigated with humor and grace. How to Die Alone is not just a comedy. It is a poignant exploration of loneliness, self-discovery, and the complexities of human connection. That's all for this story. We upload videos every day covering many different subjects, so hit that subscribe button to stay informed. Thanks for watching.